Hey everybody, there are a handful of frustrations I have with Hindenburg as a podcast editor. Among them are the lack of buses, and that the spacebar no longer starts and stops audio if I have a plug-in window open. Please, Hindenburg, fix this. It's just frustrating to be working with tweaking an EQ or a compressor and need to stop go to hit the spacebar and nothing happens. Hindenburg did address one of my major frustrations in Hindenburg 2 with the introduction of templates, but in their infinite wisdom, templates are not available when using the video track. So each time I wanted to use Hindenburg to clean up, mix, and master a track or tracks for my video projects, I would have to open up the XML I would first have to remember which plugins I need for each voice. I'd have to load each one up individually, go in, select the preset for that voice. So that's 12 steps per channel. Another 12 steps for setting up the master bus. So if I have a three track video, that is 48 steps to get up and running. That just isn't efficient. It was so inefficient that I just gave up on using Hindenburg for cleaning up my audio for video. The other frustration that I've had with Hindenburg that wasn't addressed in H2, which I'm kind of surprised wasn't, is the limitation to six plugin slots. For me, a typical track might consist of D-reverb, D-noise, a noise gate, maybe a mouth D-click, DS, EQ, compression, and a loudness meter. We're already at eight plugins, so I'm having to compromise on how I can process the audio. I'm not sure why this limitation exists, but I came across the new Waves Sheps Omni Channel 2, and it talked about hosting other plugins, and I remembered I had another plugin that did this. That's the Waves Studio Rack which is a free utility plugin from Waves. So here we are in Hindenburg. I've got a template set up. I've got my six plugins loaded. But let's say I don't want to have to load these from scratch every time. Maybe I'm setting up a new show and I don't have a template that fits it or I'm working on a video project and I used the, I'm using the video track to import the audio. So let me create a new track here. Let's load up the plugin. So here we have the Studio Rack plugin. It's pretty straightforward. We've got eight plugins or eight plugin slots. Click on it. Select VST3, and you can do a search, or you can manually look for the plugin you're looking for. Let's say I want to start off with Goyo. Just type it in, click on it, it loads it up. Let's say I want to add mouth declick. So I can just keep loading in plugins as I want. If I want to set a preset or customize the settings, I can do that. We can reorganize stuff by dragging and dropping. And the best part is we can save this whole plugin chain so we can load it up later. We'd hit save, give it a name, and now we can load it up whenever we want. Let's see how this works with the video project. So here I've got a video project that I've opened up from an XML file from Final Cut. So instead of starting off with a template, which we can't do when using the video track, I'd have to load everything up from scratch. But now with Studio Rack, I can load this up. 
go to my local presets. And now I've got my, my vocal chain set up. And since we're limited to eight plugins per instance of Studio Rack, I've set mine up a little bit differently. So I've got one, one instance that is set up primarily for audio cleanup. That way I can toggle on and off any plugins that I might need. I'll load up a second instance. This will be my mixing plugins. So I've got EQs, I've got compressors, I've got my loudness meter. Then on the master track, I'll load up my master preset. So now instead of 36 different steps, I was able to get everything loaded up in six. So that's quite a bit faster. It's still kind of convoluted and it seems kind of insane that we have to have workarounds like this to be able to be more efficient when working in Hindenburg. But until they address the limitations of six plugins or allow us to open up video files as templates, we need these kind of workarounds. So I'm glad I remembered about Studio Rack because it will save me a lot of time. And more importantly, it'll save me a lot of the frustration I was feeling whenever I was trying to do a video track in Hindenburg. The pros of using Studio Rack is it just makes it easier to load preset plugin chains into projects without recreating the wheel each time. We can save presets for each person or each use case. And lastly, it's a free plugin. Everybody loves free. Like I said, I have one set up for audio cleanup. I have another one set up for mixing duties and another one set up for mastering. The cons of this plugin, the only drawback is that it can only load VST3 plugins. That's probably not a deal breaker for most people, but if some of the plugins you rely on are audio units or older VST plugins that haven't been updated to VST3, you can't use those. So plan accordingly. There is an alternative to Studio Rack. Blue Cat Audio has Patchwork, which is an alternative that hosts VST, VST3, and audio units but that does cost $99. I hope you found this video helpful. And if you're curious about Hindenburg 2, check out this video. I give my thoughts and opinions on Hindenburg 2 and how it compares to the original. I'll talk to you all next time.